All right, welcome to the Apex Vaulting Podcast. This is episode 123. Um, as you can see, we have a couple people joining us today. Uh, before we start, make sure if you enjoy the podcast, you think you can help someone share. Um, also, you can subscribe to us on YouTube um, and also subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. Um, and again, share the content if you enjoy it and you think it would be helpful for someone. And if you have any comments or questions, please email us at apexvaulting at gmail.com. So today, I have a couple of my high school athletes with me. Um, we're going to be talking about pole vault and specifically how strength and conditioning can impact your jump. Um, we have Alex here. We have Bella. Uh, when, like, so for those of you that don't know, we have a Apex Strength and Conditioning app. Um, you can find the link on our Instagram. Just go in the bio on the link tree and the Apex Strength and Conditioning app. There's a couple options. You can either do the standard, which is just twenty nine dollars a month, and that gives you your programming for the month. And you even have a chat option. You can talk to the coach. I don't know if they have. And the coach is a former pole vaulter who is a strength and conditioning coach, and he's worked with athletes of all different sports, including NFL players. Um, so he's very knowledgeable. Uh, not just some guy that's like, this is what I did when I pole vaulted. Uh, so, you know, when did you guys start the strength and conditioning app? Uh, and maybe like walk us through some, some of the things that you noticed as you went through the strength and conditioning app. So for me, I started, I think around like the fall this year, which is like around September, yeah, September, which even then that's pretty late considering right. of my, you know, how old I am. But I also, I started a little bit. Well, maybe but, give a little background, like what grade, what's your PR? So like all that I'm stuff. a senior. I just graduated. Uh, my PR is 12. Um, and I started <laughs> junior-ish year, basically, is when I started pole vaulting, seriously. Um, yeah, I, I started the app at, in, around the fall, um, which is, yeah, given that's pretty Yeah, late. and what, so what was your PR when you started the strength and conditioning app? It was a rough 10-6. Ten, a rough ten, six. So going into senior year, 10, six PR, um, I mean, maybe give some background, like what poles, what grips were you on? Um, I think it was a 13, 20, I think was, or maybe the 25, I might've squeezed out. Maybe the 13, 20, that's pretty big. That's pretty big. That's a, that's a big poll. Um, I think, I think when I jumped 10, six, first time I gripped like 12, three, but very, it was not a great jump, obviously. Yeah, very, very rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm shocked that you can grip that 12-3. But, and that was maybe a one-time thing. And then, yeah, okay. So what would you normally grip? 12 on a good day. Yeah, yeah. So like 11, 9, 12. Yeah, 12 three was the biggest grip you ever had. And um, 13, 25. So you start the strength and conditioning app. What would you say your strength levels were at? Like, could you maybe give us some numbers or context of, like, what you did when you first started to, like, now at the end? So I started on the, the beginner program because there's the two. Um, I I think I probably could have handled the intermediate one because I, I think that the beginner program wasn't uh, – wasn't I, I don't think I was too beginner because I don't think I, like, it was – I had some strength. Wasn't yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, not nothing crazy. But I mean, you definitely can't go wrong starting with the yeah, beginner. There's no, you have not done a yeah. regimented because uh, I at, to, up program. to that point I never really had like a, a program. like a program to mm -hmm. follow, which is like a big thing of why like I was hesitant to lift because I never really felt like I had a program to follow. And you didn't know what to do. Yeah, I didn't really know what to do because I'd always you know people would like I would do that lift, but like I'm like so what are you doing? They're like oh I'm just doing this, but like how do I know I'm supposed to do that? Like should I like should I, I can't just do it? Right, like yeah. is it going to be beneficial? Is it going to hurt? Yeah. Because I think, especially in the pole vault world, like so many people are like scared. They're like, don't lift. You'll get too bulky. Oh my goodness. Then you won't be able to fly in the air. You won't, you won't go up more. To the uh, <laughs> right? So I think sometimes, and, and, and again, maybe you guys can talk about this and we'll get back to your stats in a little bit. But like, I think sometimes it's tough. Some people that coach pole vault, if you're out there, you're not sure. I think as a coach, getting the strength, uh, strength and conditioning app would be huge because you can kind of, you can yourself go through it and learn, you know, the, these exercises, these programs, and then help guide your athletes more. Because sometimes these pole vault coaches don't have enough knowledge in strength and conditioning, and they'll just say general things like, get your upper body stronger, Bella. Oh, okay. What, what do you do? Do I just do bicep curls? I mean, how much, how much bicep curls were you guys doing? In this program, 
no None. bicep, no bicep we, girls. Weird, no bicep girls. Uh, so I think having some guidance is, is, is huge. Because yeah. otherwise, I mean, I, I was just talking to one of the other high school kids today, and they they basically were almost doing a bodybuilder split. You know, they were doing like chest and tries, back and buys, and then a squat day. And it's like, okay, this would be okay if you were bodybuilding. But if we want to get better at pole vault, like we need to really like change this a little bit, right? Make it because the the lifting and even I would say sprinting, any training you're doing is supplementary to the pole vault. The pole vault is your main thing and you want everything else to support that pole vault and make, make your, your pole vault better. Um, so when you first started on that beginner program, what were some of the things that you were doing? What were some of the numbers you were hitting? And then maybe skip ahead to now to what you're, you're able to do. I mean, even just with the beginner program, like some of the, it, it, it's not like the stuff was basic in any way because it is still like, you know, it's still real lifts. I mean, you're still yeah. doing like, you know, uh, like stuff you could do now, even not on a basic program, right, you know, right. but you know, it keeps it simple. Um, I mean, the low numbers, I mean, especially with low full bad form. Yeah. You got, you got to give us an example. Know that. Dude, uh, you know, when I think when I first started benching, I don't know if I was, but it's also to take into account that I probably could bench. Right. Right. I was probably benching like 70 pounds, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's not, and what know. are we doing now? Now we're benching. Well, if Bella, you know, if, Be if Bella is spotting me, Bella is throwing him on like one fifteen for for five, you know. Okay. That's that. Yeah. Yeah. So that that that's good progress. Um, and and again, I think some of the things that maybe are hard to gauge too is like with the strength and conditioning app, there are some plyometrics in there. There's box jumps, stuff like that. Um, which maybe you guys don't know your measurements offhand. You don't know what cuts <laughs> you're jumping on now. Um, you just know it's the bigger box. Uh, there's two, it's the bigger box. Yeah. So it's like that you definitely have progressed through that. And what about now? Okay, so we're using bench as an example. You went from 75 to 115. And this is for reps. It's not yeah. just for one. Uh, what were, what's the rep range for those? Uh, five? Yeah, five. 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 Um, and so now, again, you were ripping anywhere between 11.9 on the best day ever, 12.3 on a 13.25. What's, what are your grips now? What poles are you on? Um, and again, he went from 10, six to 12 this year. So I think the biggest grip I got was 12, eight or 12, nine ish probably. And it was, it was the 1430. No, no. Oh, 1430 or 13740. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So you just do the math, a 13740 is a 1350. So you went from 1325 to 1350. Yeah. That's a big jump in, in pole stiffness. And obviously the grip went up about six inches. Yeah. Um, those are great increases. And again, you went from 10, six to 12. Now also, I, you know, I always like to be honest and not like, you know, forget this. We are talking about a high school senior boy. So yeah. I'm sure puberty played its part, but again, you take out the lifting, your 75 bench press is not going to turn magically into 115 for five. Right. It's like it would maybe be better. Maybe you'd hit 95. Yeah. Right. But you wouldn't get that extra, you know, that you got. Also, you know, from a coaching perspective. And it's very important. You have to track more data than just your PR. But like your mid mark, you know, went from where like last year, it's like you were lucky if you're hitting 40, 41, where now you can hit 45. Right. So the run was way more explosive. Um, and and even I think at a certain point this year, we're going too a little explosive, too, yeah. too explosive, too much, because you kind of experience a little bit of CNS fatigue, right? Central nervous system fatigue. For people who don't know, when you do something that's very, very explosive, and for pole vaulters, you definitely, you know, if you're going full approach, that's super explosive. You're typically supposed to get 72 hours rest in order to not overtax the, the CNS and if you do overtax CNS, I mean, what did you experience? What was starting to happen at practices? Yeah, what, through, a lot of run throughs. Yeah. I mean, stuff that you could, you know, I, I started running through it at a three. Like, I would run through it at a five, go back, run through it at a three. And that's how you know the practice is over. Yeah. And so, like, that's a sign of CNS fatigue. And, like, me and Alex started talking because I realized, like, one, you were having a meet every single Saturday. And then you would jump typically Sunday, Tuesday, or Sunday, Thursday. Right? And... And you were getting stronger and faster. And like, I would just watch you do pole runs and jumping drill. I'm like, wow, this is getting a lot better, you know? 
And now it's like, you're starting to tax that CNS. So we actually like for a week and a half, what do we do at practice? What do I have to do? Ones. Zeros and ones. So no run. We're just, you know, two steps into the pit. And, and then when you went to your first meet after that, what happened? First one? Uh, yeah, no, I was, I was killing the poles. I was bringing out the poles actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I jumped eleven six again. Uh, it was a good push PR too. So yeah. it was a good, it was a good meet. Yeah. Then, yeah. Push PR. Point. What is that? I, I, I went from negative push off to positive. Okay. And push off for those of you that don't know, that's how high or below your grip you jump. So just to give you some numbers, like imagine if you have somebody gripping 13, they jump 13 because the eight inch drop in the box, that means they're jumping eight inches above their grip. Right. Um, yeah. So, that, I mean, I, I think the apex strength conditioning app definitely helped. Obviously you have to include pole vault practice and technique. You can't just like stop pole vaulting and lift and expect to get these numbers. Bell, what about for you? When did you start um, the strength and conditioning app? And then, like, what were your numbers kind of going into it, like pole vault wise, lift wise, and where are we at now? So it was a little bit different. I started August of last year. When okay. It first came out because I would kind of just walk back here, do like a little bit of stuff, like not know what I was doing. Right, right, right. I wouldn't track my numbers like for a deadlift or anything. I'd right. Kind of just like try to follow everyone else, like the older kids. Stuff yeah, like yeah. That. And then you gave me the app, and then I actually had something to follow through right. and, like, track my numbers. I think it's been helpful, like, throughout the different phases to see, like, your progress. Because you can see, like, when you last did it and what your numbers were. So, like, I can see, like, October 18th, I lifted, like, this much. And now, like, I can base my numbers off of that. Right, yeah. So, yeah, on the app, this is all tracking. Like, you're going to put in your numbers so you can go back and forth and see where you were the last time you did an exercise to kind of see the progress. And I think... I think always like what people forget, you know, to this day now I'm, I'm old school. I'm not on my phone when I lift, but like I have a notepad and a pen and I just like write my numbers. I mean, to this day, I mean, I, I've been lifting now probably since like I've been consistently training probably since 2013 or 14. And it's like, I still write everything down because especially like when you're first starting to lift, you may remember your numbers at first, but as the, t as time goes on, it's like, wait, what were my numbers? And also, never mind if an injury happens. Like, there have yeah. been times where, like, I can't do pull-ups because, like, something hurts. And so now it's like, I need to know. It's like, okay, where were my numbers back then? Where am I at now? Because, like, obviously coming back from injury, I'm not going to hit my pull-up numbers that I just did before injury. Um, so, yeah. So what was your PR? What poles and grips were you jumping on when you started the shrink down? So I was at 10.6. I think the biggest pull I was ever on was the 13.10. Okay. And then I think my highest grip was 11 or 11.3. Okay. Because I accidentally tried gripping 12. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Room, and I couldn't even take Yeah, I remember, that, I remember that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now the baseball I've been on 13.7, uh, gripping 12.3. Okay, and what 13.7? Oh, 145. 145, yeah. So think about that, right? A 13.745, again, that's like a 13.55. So you went from a 13.110 to a 155. Um, and obviously the grip went up as well. Uh, that, that's tremendous. Again, to be complete, you're a growing girl, you yeah. know what I mean? So you're a junior now, you're obviously physically developing too, like nature is taking its course. So that's part of it too. Again, I think like in Alex's case though, the strength and conditioning is also helping because yeah. uh, what about like pull-ups, for example, like where were your pull-ups when you started the program? Where are they at now? I was most likely just doing them with the band or like a little bit on my own. I wouldn't do weighted pull-ups. Now I think you can do 25. Yeah. So that that that's really big change. And how many how many reps with the 25 pounds? Is it I just think, one or I think it's two. Two. Yeah, okay. So two reps with 25 pounds where you were struggling to do body weight yeah. pull-ups. So that that's a huge, huge increase. And you know, it's like and, and like we just talked about too, if you think about it, you're gripping eleven you know, to jump 10, six, you're barely getting any push off. Uh, now, you know, you are able to get push off on your jumps. Uh, I think that will go up a lot more as technique improves as yeah. well. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, that's going to have a huge impact.
Um, what about like deadlift or something like that? I think deadlift is one fifty five. It was really low. Like, okay. I, I, and now it's two fifteen. I think I haven't done it in a while. So yeah, yeah. Well, but, right. You're dealing with an injury. <laughs> But, and, and again, like when we talk mid marks like last year, it's like 40, 41 at best. Now you're hitting a 43, six. And then actually yesterday we didn't intend to for this happen, but she had 45 and was able to still stay tall on the run, keep the posture, stay front side. And that's how you cleared 11, six hitting a 45 mid. So the difference in mid is tremendous. And again, let's say even the deadlift numbers. Okay, fine. You said what, 135 when you started? It was 155. 155, yeah. right? It's like, that's great. Maybe you would have gotten naturally stronger and you would have approached, I don't know, 180, 185, but I don't think you would be 200 plus, yeah. you know, without training it. And obviously, like, the stronger your legs are, the bigger strides you're going to be able to take, the run's going to get faster. Um, so th these, these are really, really uh, important things that become helpful. I think for a lot of people that are listening, and, you know, maybe you guys can speak on this. I'll oftentimes see pole vaulters that are like, oh, like, I don't understand. Like, why am I not jumping higher? But it's not just about technique. You have to have the physical end of it as well. I mean, what, what do you guys experience when you talk to people? I know sometimes you talk about stuff with teammates and stuff. Like, what's your experience with pole vaulters? Like, do you think most people understand how critical the training aspect is? No, I mean, most of the people that I've jumped with in, you know, for most of my high school career don't really focus too much on, on physical training. I mean, I think there's also people that are more natural gifted than others, which is, you know, helpful for others. Mm -hmm. But I think from my perspective, you know, in my situation, like at one point you realize like I may not be that naturally gifted. So <laughs> I have to work for that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I think to your point too, it's like, and here's the thing, if you are naturally gifted, that's great. Yeah. But if you want to exceed your natural abilities, yeah. if you want super natural abilities, you need to have super training, right? So you yeah. that, that's the only way you're going to take it up a notch. I mean, what were you going to say, Bella? I think like a lot of people will say like they go to the gym, but then again, like having this training regimen has been helpful because like there's explosive stuff that we can do off the body and then just like actual lifting like yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. But some people just go to the gym. They'll say like, "Oh, I just went to a few machines, like walked around." But, like, I think that, and then they'll be like, "Oh, I was up all night, like studying, or I was doing this or this." But I don't think anyone actually realizes like if they actually lived in focus, like on a plan, that they'd be even better than they are. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I I think kind of like you're mirroring what Alex said earlier. A lot of people may even go to a gym and it's almost like they're checking off a box. Like I go to the gym. I don't know what you want from me, but it's like, yeah, but what are you doing at the gym? You know, Th this even goes with like pole vault technique and training. You know, a lot of people are like, well, I don't understand. I'm not, not swinging any better. My takeoff's not any better. Well, like, are you actually trying to improve the technique? Yeah. You know? So what you do, you know, is very important and having something like the shooting conditioning app, guide you along so you're doing the right things that that could be tremendous because like you said just walking up to some machines and doing some random rep ranges and random lifts yeah. um and one of the things that i always talk about and i know they have the rpe scale on, on the app which is very helpful for people who don't know what the rpe scale is it basically tells you how hard the workout should be meaning like okay you should be able to do this and still have like three left uh, three reps uh, that you could still have done, but stop there. Or sometimes it'll be like, okay, max it out today. Like there should be nothing left in the tank. I always tell people, think about it like, um, like babies. The first thing a baby does is roll over, right? Well, how does that baby build the muscle, right? Because that's the problem, right? They don't have the core strength and the muscles to actually roll over. You could see it in the baby's face. They strain, right? You see a baby like, like they're trying hard. And I'm like, look, if you're just going up to like, you're saying Bella, a, a random machine and I could like have a conversation with Alex as I do my leg extensions, I'm not straining. I'm not going to build muscle. So you have to make sure you're working hard enough. Um, otherwise it, you're kind of just going through the motions and you're not going to get the results you want. I think even here, sometimes people are like scared to come back here and lift. Like after when I'm working out, I'm just like, come back with me, come lift with me. Like, it's good for everyone. 
Right, right. I mean, look, you, on my end, you know, I, I think about things from multiple perspectives. I obviously think if you're a high school or college pole vaulter, you need to lift if you want to increase your performance. But for me, I think about it as like a lifelong thing. You know, if you want to be mobile, if you want to, have, you know, be able to enjoy some of the activities that you like uh, or liked when you were younger, you have to do some strength and conditioning just to keep your body mobile and be able to enjoy life. Um, so I think it's critical for everybody. Um, but at the high school level, if you're vaulting, like Alex said, some of us don't have that natural speed, yeah. that natural strength to just be able to go, you know, and if you don't, you're going to have to train to be able to accomplish any of these, these uh, PRs that you're looking for. Cause I know even like, you know, I'm very proud of both. But I also understand you guys are not world record holders. Yeah. Not quite there yet, right? You know, but how many how many guys in high school don't jump 12 would like to jump 12? Yeah. How many girls don't jump 11.6 would like to jump 11.6? And look, there's even lower bars, right? Like there, there's a girl out there that just wants to get to eight. There's a guy out there that just wants to get to 11. It may require some physical training. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to just happen. And I think for me, for a while, I wanted it to just happen. But there's eventually, there's a point where you gotta, you know, you gotta accept that, you know, like you gotta work, you know, like, it, it, and I think especially with the program, like it just makes it so much easier. And I think a lot of it, yeah, for a while, it was like a guidance thing, like without guidance, it's, it's hard for, you know, for someone totally foreign to, to lifting to just, to start. Yeah, and, and I think the thing is like, Right. Again, I get it. Like you go to Planet Fitness, yeah. it's like 10, 20 bucks a month. The problem is you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Right. And then if you want, and listen, I think if you could afford it, yeah. If you want like actual instruction, like someone to coach you through a strength and conditioning session, that could be upwards of three, five, 700 a month, yeah. you know, to get strength and conditioning coaching. So the, the strength app is a really low bar at $29 to kind of get some guidance. You, you basically have this virtual coach. Every time you live, um, there is a customized option for, I think, like 250. Um, you could definitely do that. You'll even have like contact with Calvin and, and he'll customize the program for your needs. Uh, but having that on your side is super, super helpful. I know for me as a coach, too, I mean, I think in earlier years in the club, you know, when I only had one pit and there would be at most 10 people at practice. I think it was a little bit easier for me to kind of like also be in the back a little bit more and help people through the lifts. But now, I mean, you guys come on Sundays, yes. you know how busy it is. It's like, there's a private lesson, a group lesson, a private, and this is all back to back to back to back. And a lot of times I can't like, other than just like maybe keeping an eye and be like, Hey, you know, just like brace more while you deadlift or whatever. I, I have to keep coaching. So this is a great way for a lot of the club kids to have some, some structure to their strength and conditioning and they're not just going in the back by themselves. Because I think like you said, Bella, I think it is a little bit scary and intimidating. If you don't know what you're doing, you know, it's like, you know, like even, okay, your bench press is 115. I get it. You're not on the record board like Calvin, right? With his 350. But at the same time, like, you know how to bench, you know how to set up, you know what you're doing now. For someone who doesn't, it's like, it is intimidating. Like, how do I, how do I start this process? The strength and conditioning app is a really, really easy way. And it, it, it can give you that structure that you need. Yeah, even when I started the app, I was doing a lot of things wrong. Like I was doing the landmine press. I couldn't, I couldn't even get it up. Like you would look over and be like, oh, just, just do less than that. Right, right, right. It was right. just the bar. I could barely even do the bar. And I would do like RDLs and Sarah would just be laughing at me because like, my form was terrible, but over time, like the numbers increase in the form. Right, right. Yeah. Because also obviously like once you're on the app and people are back here that do lift, everybody kind of, it's a communal thing where everybody's helping each other. Um, and it's way more inviting than you'd think, yeah. you know, it's like someone like Sarah and again, you guys are real tight. So, okay, fine. You bust each other's chops, but you know, like someone like Sarah or even you, if it was like a new person back here, you're not going to bust their chops. You're just going to help them, you know, because you want to see everybody get better. Um, I, I have this question for you guys too. How, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but how important do you think 
it is to have a coach that understands strength and conditioning. I think it's it's, it's got to be one of those most important things because think of it, a, a coach that's you know has athletes of all skill levels, not just studs. They have you have to know in some way strength and conditioning. You have to implement it because if a coach that's just coaching studs, you know that are great. They don't need that because they're good anyway. So they can guide themselves. Right. Like, they, yeah. like this guy's already hitting this a 50 yeah. mid. You know, this girl's already hitting a 45 mid. Like, I don't have to train them to hit those mids. They yeah. already do it. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important. Um, no one on the, in my school lifts. We don't even, like, it's not even built into our schedule. So I think, like, it's important for the whole team to lift, not just the And right. then, like, when you look at the best girls in the state, you're like, if you trained like I trained on the app, like, there'd be no chance of ever catching up to you. Like, you'd just be so much better because your coach would be enforcing you to lift up. Well, yeah, I mean, you're bringing up a great point. And look, I think there are some high school track programs out there that they probably have an amazing staff and they lift and it's structured. But by and large, you know, again, you know, I don't want anybody to get mad listening to this podcast. But when we talk about in general, I mean, there's, there's a lot of high schools that it's just, you know what, there's a lot of events. There's a lot of kids on the team. They're just trying to get through the running workout. And then it's like time to go home, you know? So there's not that structure for strength and conditioning. Um, and sometimes the coaches don't have the knowledge, you know? So now it's difficult. Again, we go back to what you guys were talking about. Like, well, I, I think I should lift, but how, you know, I don't want to do the wrong thing, right? Like you don't want to end up like a bodybuilder, right? Like uh, I was telling this story to someone in an earlier session. I remember one year uh, in division three, the school in New Jersey, Rowan, they had this kid, I think in high school jumped 15, right? And he he would jump on 15 foot poles. In college, he was struggling to jump 14 because he had started bodybuilding while he was in college. He was jumping on maybe a 15, 85 or 90. The kid easily weighed 240. And by the way, he looked magnificent. Like he was so jacked, like shredded, no body fat. But it's just like it wasn't applicable to the yeah. vault. So he couldn't run down the runway fast enough. And the kid would really be upset. And at the time I was coaching Ramco college, he would see me at a lot of meets and I would try to help him. And then one day I had to like kind of break it to him. I was like, dude, you're just too big for vault. Like if you want your vault to be better, you have to specialize your training so that it's geared towards the vault. Cause I think, and maybe you guys can speak to this. I think sometimes people think I want people to be bodybuilders. You know, like they, they, they're like, oh, that Bronco guy, he wants them to lift. They're going to get too bulky. But that's not what, I mean, I don't know. Like, do these two look yeah. too bulky? Look too bulky. I, no. I, I, <laughs> no one's mistaking you for Arnold Schwarzenegger, yet, Alex? No. A couple times. A couple times. I couldn't believe Daria didn't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger was. Really? Yes, sir. Do you not know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is? You don't know him. You know, I know. Wow, this is Oops. all right. Really? Like, you know, what I'm saying? Like, I think you know, we got to change the Apex Strength and Conditioning app. That should be the first thing. I'm going to get it. Yeah. It should be Arnold. The demonstration. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Terminator. Yes. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I think, you know, obviously, if, if you're at the average high school, you probably don't have the structure you need to lift. And especially if you're frustrated, like you said, it could be any event, not just pole vault. It's like, if you're frustrated with your performances, you might have to do some strength and conditioning in order to be competitive. Um, I think another thing was like, it's really important for them to implement strength and conditioning because here we like break down each part of the jump and like what muscles we should be using. Yeah. But I guess sometimes the coaches don't understand like what muscle you should be using. Like yeah. here we emphasize like using our lats. To Upper pull back, yeah. Up. So that's why like pull-ups and bench and push-ups is really important. But then if a coach doesn't understand that, how are they going to implement that in their strength? Well, right. So now like, right, now we're opening up to bigger topics, which are important. I think sometimes, you know, and again, I, I'm trying to help everybody get better. I want athletes out there to get better and I want to help coaches be better. If you don't understand strength and conditioning and you don't understand the human body enough, I think you hear a lot of pole vault coaches talk about positions or what something should look like. Sometimes they sprinkle in a little bit of physics, but then it's like an athlete can't do anything like that. You know, like I, I, I was talking to a coach out of me and he was like, well, you know, I just, I just think so-and-so has to rock back more. 
they have to rock back more. And what I said to the coach, and, and he said he he was like, wow, that, that makes a lot of sense. I was like, coach, you're telling the athlete to rock back, but you're not telling them how to rock back, right? And so for an athlete, we have to talk about feel. And when we talk about feel, we can then even like specify muscle, right? Like you should feel this in this muscle. Yeah. This is how the muscle should be working. And I think if more coaches had a little bit, I mean, you don't have to be a strength and conditioning coach, but if you just have a little bit of knowledge about strength and conditioning, you could really, really help your athletes take it to the next level. And I think even their pull technique will improve. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, I think I, I could agree with that. I mean, a lot of, uh, you see other coaches, and I think even people I try to, you know, help, uh, it's, you got to really break down like muscles and, and technique and doing something specifically like, uh, like a lot of times you'll hear people like, okay, you gotta, you gotta turn. Like you're not turning, you gotta turn. How do I turn? How do I turn? How do I turn? I mean, I mean, for a while, like turning is like a foreign concept to me. I couldn't even clear eight feet, but it's like uh, understanding the muscles you're using and understanding how to use them and understanding it entirely rather than just doing something is like crucial. Right. Right. Well, and, and it's interesting, right? Like yesterday I made a chance and then I want to mention European championships um, you know, we're at state meet of champs in New Jersey and a lot of great jumping. It was a great meet. I think two kids on the boys side jumped 16. What did the girl jump? 13, 13 two, you know, Bella plays six with 11, six. So it was pretty deep meet, you know, it was, it was exciting to watch. I don't know how many of those athletes actually know what they're doing or they're just natural at a certain segment of the ball, yeah. right? Like there was one guy, you're fine, Billy. Okay. Um, there, there was one guy where, uh, you know, he had a great swing and he could really move the pole with his swing, you know? I don't know if he was taught that or if that was just something he's good at. And, you know, when you don't, if you're not aware of what you're doing, you can't control it. And that's a big issue, which brings me to European championships. Um, the Greek vaulter, do you know how to pronounce his name? Do you know what I'm talking about? I know about? you're talking about it. Yeah, it's like Manolo or something. I, I forget. I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but like he took up a jump in warmups where he was way oh, out yeah, exactly. and he got rejected. And literally I'm showing the video today in one of my sessions and one of my middle school girls, first time showing the video, He's like halfway down the run and she's like, oh no. Like she saw that he was out at the mid. Like she knows he shouldn't have taken off. And yet he took that jump up. Like it's a warm up jump. It's a warm up jump. If it's way out, run through. I know some people are like, never run through. I highly disagree. If it's not safe, run through, right? But it's like, how does he not at that level have enough awareness to know it's like, this is way out. I shouldn't jump. And I think when we can start to like, like Bella and, and Alex are, are, are saying, if we can start to break down the event into pieces, talk about the feeling, the muscles that we're engaging, become aware of pull speed, become aware our body is going, like swing speed, um, that one, I mean, it's gonna be way safer, you know? Yeah. And two, you're gonna jump way higher. I mean, can you walk us through, I mean, like, I remember like my heart stopped. You hit 45 at 11.6, that first attempt. I was like, oh no, this is way out. What were, what were you feeling as you were running down the runway in that moment? Because again, she's supposed to be hitting 43.6 and she just hit 45, that's a foot and a half out. Yeah, I think the thing is I always plant early. So yeah. the big thing is like, I was like, if I stay tall and I plant early, at least like I'm, I'm taller. I'm not like leaning forward and stabbing because then you get ripped off the ground. Right. So it's kind of just like, okay, I'm going to stay tall and I'm just going to, I'm going to see if it works. Yeah. Yeah. And it gave yourself a chance. Mm -hmm. And obviously you made the bar and yeah. the rest is history. Right. Um, and it, it's funny because like Ellie, uh, it's her first day back from college. Ellie's one of her alters. She was in one of the podcast episodes and we talked about strength and conditioning and nutrition, the importance of protein, which uh, we could talk about that maybe. But uh, it reminded me of when Ellie jumped 12 for the first time, she was supposed to hit a 43 mid, hit 45 or 45, six. I was like, oh no, that's way too far out. But she kept her like bottom hand up, stayed tall and boom, that ended up being a mate. 
which I think when you're conscious and aware of things, even when the mid's a little bit off, something timing wise, maybe a little off, you can make adjustments because you're aware of what happened on that jump. Where if you're not aware, I mean, let's go back to like first time turning. Yeah. When you're trying to learn that, if you're not aware, I mean, how many times did you probably clear a bar? With, I mean, both of you without a turn. Even, even oh, not even clearing a bar. I mean, <laughs> look, it took me like so long to even jump like eight feet. I mean, um, without turning, how long? I don't even. I don't even. I couldn't even tell you the first time I turned. Like it's like it. it was. It's such a well. It's been turning yeah, for turning so, so long, long that yeah. now it's like you forgot about it. But, but like, like it's such a, a like in the moment, it's such a foreign idea. Like of 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 you know, uh, of doing something the first time. But if you if you can really think your way through things, like that's how you get it done. And I think like as I like learn to vault because I mean look I mean look at videos of myself a couple months ago. Yeah. Like, wow, this is it's bad. Right. No, yeah. Just yeah. indoor to outdoor is a big change. Yeah. yeah. I'm like uh, the, the, like and I think a big thing for me is like I thought more, like thinking more, I felt more. Like I I, I paid more attention to all aspects of it rather than just going. Because right. the big thing for me was just I would just go. Well, th th this is one of Bupka's, Sergey Bupka, a former world record holder, one of three men to jump 20 feet. One of his great lines that I love is, he says, pole vault is a thinking man's game. And I really think anything that's technical, you do have to think your way through it. Like, I don't know when people watch like boxing or UFC or wrestling, people don't just like rage out and just go and that's why they win. No, they're, they're thinking and you can see them thinking. Um, that's crucial and i think when you're breaking down the technique again you're breaking down muscle to muscle how to execute this these techniques you can actually start to accomplish it instead of just like not turning your whole life mm -hmm. you know fella when what was the highest bar you cleared without a turn um, 89 i think i think like i started turning when it was like eight six around it, but right but you didn't always speed. turn yeah. i think i turned at nine six i think at 10 was my first little turn. <laughs> i do i do remember 10 i remember turning at, at 10. it took like a season and a half and it wasn't like i wasn't trying to do it like right and i would think about it too if like this time like i'm really gonna try to turn. well now think about it. it connects back to strength right because you were thinking about it but think about how you started the strength app you could barely do a body weight pull up yeah now you could do a 25 pound pull up. Well, back then you probably struggled to do a pull up. So that physically makes yeah. the turn more difficult because you don't have the upper body strength. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, I think also just like there's a lot with the turn. Like some people like try to go over butt first and it's like, like you were saying like cosmetic turn and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then like as you get more and more technical and strong, like you're able to really like pull through and get pushed up. Yeah, you have an effective turn that adds height. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. I'm still working on that too. Like yeah. you know, looking at videos, it's, it's not a great turn. Yeah, yet. well, and, and I think the first time you jumped 11.6, I think was a better technical jump. I think yesterday, because of the back injury, it was just a little bit tough yeah. for you to like grip it and rip it, <laughs> you know? Uh, we, we were messing around at the beat yesterday, me and Sean. We were like, dude, like, you, you got to bend it and send it, but, like, you can't use your send it too early because yeah. then that's it. So you got to wait for a PR bar to send it, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a formula, you know? It's a, yes, yes. And, and we're m messing around now, but I, I think a lot of times, like, what we're describing, it's like, if you don't understand the technique enough, you don't understand what muscles to engage, People are literally just getting on the runway and trying hard. At the end of the day, that's what it boils down to. It's like I tried really hard that time. And I think for some people, I mean, clearly some people, like, it works. I, I even see people that jump, you know, 15, that jump 15 feet and they're just trying really hard and they, it works. But like, I, that's like, I feel like to me, it's almost like that's what I did. When I was trying to like clear an eight foot bar. I was just trying my best. I was trying really hard. I wasn't doing anything though. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't using my muscles. I was just trying right you also see the opposite side yesterday we saw a lot of people that were trying really hard and it yeah. was not working out and for them yeah no yeah i think there's a lot of times yeah. like listen i think when manolo got rejected he was trying hard it just didn't work that time and that kind of going back to what you're saying sure sometimes we see people that get great results and they just try hard and, I, and again we're maybe simplifying too much obviously there's things yeah. that they do well yeah, they yeah. might run well or yeah. plant the pole well or whatever um, but 
the thing is, if you have more control over what you're doing, you'll jump even higher. So maybe that 15 foot guy becomes 16. Um, the analogy I always use is, you know, in jujitsu, right? In martial arts, they give out belts, right? Black belt means you mastered the sport. This one coach, Faraz Sahabi, very good jujitsu coach in Canada. He trained George St. Pierre, who's arguably the greatest UFC fighter of history. He's at a tournament and John Donaher, who is arguably the best jujitsu coach in the world, they're at the tournament and Faraz Sahabi's talking to John Donner and he's like, look, check out my athlete. Like he's a brown belt, but he's beaten five black belts this year. I think I'm going to give him his black belt. Like he's mastered it. And John Donaher's like watching, watching. He's like, I don't think so. He's like, what? I just told you, you beat five black belts. Like, yeah, but watch, like he didn't actually like execute the technique. He's not aware of what he's doing. He just fell into that position and then got out of it and he muscled his way through. And for Asahabi's like, oh my goodness, he's right. He hasn't mastered it yet. He's just a natural athlete with enough skill and it works out and he can beat black belts that are unathletic. But now imagine you put an athletic black belt. He can't beat him. And that's the same thing in pole vault. Like, look, just because you're winning your meets doesn't mean you can't do better. And going back to the technical stuff, I had a girl come in from Hawaii for a private lesson. And one of the things she said to me, she's like, yeah, my coach always says, stay tight to the pole. How? Yeah. Right? So you have to be able to break this stuff down. I think a lot of times people use like pole vault jargon. And the thing is, if you actually sat your athletes down and said, can you explain what I'm saying to you? If they can't, that's an issue. I, and I think even for me, if I talk, I don't know, even like five, 10 years ago, I don't think every apex athlete actually knew what they were doing. I mean, Calvin, who still jumps in the club, he was in the last episode about adults jumping. You know, when he was in high school and college, I don't think he could explain the technique as much as he can now. Yeah. Cause I think too many times, like as pole vault coaches, we are caught up on like just putting someone on the right pole, the right step, yeah. the right grip and, and the right standards that we're not doing enough about teaching the event. Like you want your athletes to be able to teach the event. And I think, you know, with you two, I, I don't know. We always talk pole vault technique. I could trust you guys to coach. You know, obviously I don't have high school kids coached at the club. Um, I feel like maybe some adults would be upset if the high school kid coached them. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, but you guys can coach. And I think at your high schools already, you know, you help out and coach a lot of the kids on your teams. Um, uh, do you guys have any comments about what I just said? No. Um, is there anything else that you guys want to bring up? Any topics in general? Like pole vault wise, not just general. <laughs> okay. I, let's not start discussing like, you know, pop cultures. The Super Bowl. <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. No? Okay. Yeah. I mean, look, so for everybody who's watching, you know, one, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please share it, subscribe email me, comment. Uh, but I think strength and conditioning is a really, really big piece to your performance in the pole vault. Uh, also, I think your knowledge of strength and conditioning can help even make your technique better because the more you understand your body and how your body works, the more you know how to manipulate your body than to execute the pole vault technique that you're after. I think as a coach, understanding this stuff is huge. Um, well, I guess, so before I end it, I mean, this is something where, I don't know, and again, I'm trying to help people get better, but how, I could tell a Christian story, but how, how, <laughs> just that. how, how big is it for you guys knowing that I train, like how much value does that bring to the table uh, as far as like motivating you guys or maybe faith in the system when you know that you have a coach that also trains? Well, I think a big part is like, you know, it works. Like you can see proof, like you understand, like this is real, like this is the real deal. And I think with a lot of, you know, not even just pole vault, a lot of sports, a lot of like school and all yeah, parts yeah. of life, the people telling you what to do, I don't know how much I believe that they they could do the same thing that they're telling me to do. You know, and I think that's a big part of it. I think, um, yet also, I, I feel more almost like confidently comfortable and safe with the whole event in general. And 
lifting and pole vaulting. Like I, I trust, like I have full trust in the things that you're telling me for, you know, lo like lots of things, like, you know, lots of like life. Even. Yeah. Well, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, we come in Sunday mornings and we see yeah. you, like, dying on the mats. So. <laughs> we know you're working out, but... Like... Yeah. Well, yeah, and I'm not, like, literally dying. I just did a sled push workout. And, like, it's a, it's very, very intense, so I'm, like, trying to get my breath back. Uh, but even, like, last Sunday, I was doing zeros, and, like, I was sort of getting it, but you were able to, like, show me the drill correctly. Right. And, yeah. like, as Alex was saying, like, a lot of coaches, they've never even pole vaulted before, but they don't have the ability, the strength, the technique, the knowledge to implement. That. Right. Well, and, and something that I often feel too is like sometimes even if the coaches have pole vaulted, listen, we have fuzzy memories, yeah. right? It's like, you know, those like stories like, oh, I benched 315 in high school. It's like, did you? Or was it like 225, you know, uh, or maybe not even, right? I think sometimes like, let's say with run throughs, for example, you know, you'll have these pole vaulters like, oh, dude, I never ran through. Did you? Did you really never run through? You never got stood up. Like you always made it on last attempt. Like our memories are fuzzy. And I think the more you stay in it and train yourself and are able to, you know what a hard workout feels like. You know what it feels like to be tough. Like, listen, I probably throughout the year experienced CNS fatigue. You yeah. know, like I was telling Alex, like, hey, are you getting eye twitches? Yeah. You know, do you, is it hard to wake up in the morning? Do you feel foggy? You know, it's like, yeah, because I experience these things. Because sometimes I train too hard or the schedule's super busy and whatever. Um, I think that that brings something to the table. Uh, and everybody throws this around and it becomes cliche, lead by example. Lead by example. What does that actually mean? You know, and... Look, first of all, I, I'm not trying to be egotistical, but and I'm very thankful for Alex's comment. But the, that will get more trust out of your athletes. When they know you're putting in work too, they, they have faith in you. And then this is why too, even when I'm like, hey, no, no, we can't jump today. He, he, you know, and I'm sure you doubted me that week that we did just zeros and ones. Oh, I like bet. I bet. Actually, and I, I think that was a big part of it for me. Because I almost kind of felt like, how far I've come. Because I, I remember thinking, like, like when I first started, like, all right, we're doing fives. All right, tomorrow, what are we doing? We're doing fives. Why are we not doing five left? What are we doing? I'm like, why am I doing this three? Why am I, why am I doing right. twos? Why am I doing ones? And I think, like, I even, like, before, right, like you know, normally before meet day, you went to something crazy. Back then, I was like, all right, get the poles out. We're, we're, yeah, we're doing full jumps. Me. We're doing full yeah, yeah. jumps. I'm like, how am I going to do it tomorrow if I can't do it today? And I think right. that's, a, like, a big, like, I've come far with my like understanding like it's not about like if I could do it like I I could have done it already it's like it's more about like fully understanding and and being prepared rather than just ripping it all the time right because the meat day that's when you want to get on your biggest pole that's when you want to grip up and it'll be easy you bend the pole a lot you land deep you know you got to go up five pounds and instead of forcing the issue in practice where maybe you have a manolo jump and you get rejected. Now you're like, no, no, I don't want to go on that pole. I get hurt. You know? No. Now your feedback is always, I always land on the mats. I'm always successful in my jumps. And when the pole bends a lot and I go up the pole, I just jump higher. It's not dangerous. Um, I feel like you're going to say something. I feel like another thing is like, you don't only share success stories and so many coaches are just like, they only want to talk about their best athletes or like their best in the past, like just like the school record holder or something like that. But you're always willing to tell us like stories of like people having a hard time or like what we can learn from other people, even if they succeed. But like right. you're not only willing to talk about the success so that we have perspective when we're jumping. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, you know, it's so easy to talk about victories, but learning about failures and we learn from failure. Like even going back to the CNS story, I always talk about, well, I had already kind of like figured out the central nervous system thing. And I had an athlete that was jumping and she, her PR was 13 one at the time. And she really wanted to have a big day practice on a Monday, but we had like regionals on a Wednesday. So she only had one day rest. We went to regionals. She ran through warmups a bunch. She still jumped like 12.7 or 12.11, like something in that range. So it was not far off from her PR, but it was like a struggle. And she was like panic stricken because she's like, how am I going to jump at nationals next week? And I, I was able to sit her down and go, look, 
we got a little bit greedy. Like we shouldn't have jumped yeah. big on Monday. We only had, you know, 48 hours rest and you need minimum 72. We'll just make sure that we, we give, forget about 72 hours. We're going to give an additional day. Right. Yeah. And you'll be fully rested. And she went to nationals. It was super easy. She jumped well and, and she placed where she should have placed. So it's like by kind of telling that failure story, you guys then understand, it's like, oh, okay, like this is how this is going to work yeah. out. Like there's a plan, there's a blueprint. We've been there, we've done that, you know? And again, I, I think if you lead by example as a coach and you're training and you're in it, um, it's a lot easier for people to follow your lead, you know? Instead of just, you know, again, it's like, how much can you trust someone like you said? Like, they're telling you what you should yeah. do, but they don't do it. The, it's like a doctor telling you that you have to lose weight, but they're 300 pounds. Or it's like, yeah, yeah stop smoking cigarettes, but I have to go take a break. I gotta yeah, go. I got to go for, <laughs> for a cigarette go for a break. Smoke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's like, it, it's hard to trust people like that. Um, because like you said, they don't actually have tangible experience. Yeah. Like, I can talk to you guys about training. I can talk to you guys about diet and nutrition because there's, I, I'm literally going through it yeah. every single day. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think in closing, strength and conditioning, very important. We're, we're all three of us for strength and conditioning. Uh, that'll help you jump higher. Uh, make sure as a coach, you got to raise your game. You know, if you can, if you can, again, you don't have to be, you know, king of the world like you don't have to go to the olympics or something but if you start strength and conditioning a little bit learn more about it you'll be able to impact your your athletes you'll get better results um so yeah, yeah. anything else guys yeah, well bella alex thank you so much for being on the podcast thank you for everybody listening and uh check us out next time